This week on the podcast, we're going to get all mindful, but in a way that we've not really discussed and uh, a conversation that is a little bit different to your normal meditation mindset, <laughs> practice, and, uh, and, and, and narrative, let's say. Because we're going to talk about the, the art of mindfulness and meditation and the benefit of preparing ourselves mentally for combat sports which takes a completely different mindset. But for me, there was a ton of learnings which we can take from the idea of being a warrior, the warrior spirit. We've got Daria Albers on, and we're going to talk about, yes, her field of, of working with combat athletes, but what that can mean if we take those principles and apply them into lives that we live where it doesn't involve getting hit or hitting other people. Yeah, I've, um, I've connected a little bit with Daria, and um, she's absolutely fascinating. I was like, you need to come on the podcast because, like, she she's from a uh, she was a professional kickboxer herself i won't steal her sort of intro but like her when you think about basically someone that could absolutely kick your ass but at the same time can make you cry like a baby by taking you through a meditation it's like there are some interesting powers that this uh, that this person has and uh, yeah no it's great to hear her um really hit home and get get to the crux of a lot of questions we potentially might have and misconceptions we might have and challenges that or challenge us in a way to think about why we're going to do it or why we don't do it and and what might what might be some of the starting points for us to engage and get the benefits of some mindfulness um practice and she's super honest um which we and yeah and uh I love, I love that's one of the things I love about her um, about her delivery and she's and she's <laughs> she's also no nonsense and you've got to do it otherwise she's going to punch you in the face <laughs> say no more Jacko let the listeners uh, yeah. indulge in this conversation it's an absolute classic I really enjoyed it um, before you do that just remind you guys if you want any help with your training our periodized plan structured and very exciting and enjoyable evidence based programs are available for your consumption on our website com. I've never so you heard you on board. describe it like that Tim I quite I quite Write that, write that down. I liked that description of it. I was like, yes, I'll have one send, of those. <laughs> send that to the marketing department. Yeah. Um, so they are available. And what we often now think we should be thinking about more is long-term gains. So if you want to jump on board for an annual, it's a massively... Uh, we must do an offer on the annual, do we? Value. You get... It's, we probably do. You get, two, you, get, you, do. you get two months for the price of... No, you get 12 months for the price of 10. So take a warrior mindset, get on the front foot, get on the attack mode, take control of your training, and then when she, while she's doing your training, you can learn from what Daria Albers is going to teach you about controlling your, knowing yourself and all things self-improvement around mindset meditation to get on the front foot and go to go to war. Is that what it is? Yeah, and that if you listen all the way to the end, you'll find out whether she can make Tim cry or not. Uh, she wants to, I can tell. <laughs> uh, right, sit back and enjoy your talk as Daria Albers, the warrior spirit on the movement strength and play podcast roll that jingle listen players <laughs> you're listening to the movement strength and play podcast by the school of calisthenics here are your hosts tim and jacko So we're very lucky today to have a fantastic guest on the podcast, someone who the dizzy, oh, dizzy heights, but just the that crazy world of, of, I guess it was during COVID and just how the internet allows us to connect with people all over the world, had the opportunity to uh, connect with Daria and she's been very kind to spare some time for us to shed some light on mindfulness, meditation with the athletes she works with and we're very lucky to have her on the podcast. So Daria, welcome to... The Movement Strength and Play podcast. Are you well? Thank you very much, guys, for having me. I appreciate that. Um, so the best way, well, I would, if I was trying to describe you, it would, um, but I, I, I will do it in injustice. But the sort of um, a strong female working, the, the best way you described said something to me recently was like, Working with the some of the some of the professional fighters and kickboxers that you work with, it might be like 125 kilo like monster guys, mm-hmm. and by the time they finish their sort of meditation or mindfulness session with it, they're they're crying like babies. So I'd love to find out what those two th- what those things about, but I think that says quite a bit um, about you. But just give a bit of a background to um, 
some of the listeners that may not have come across you um, and, and some of the work that, that you're currently doing and, and then in terms of just your own career as a fighter, like where, where that all sort of started for you and then we'll crack into it. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, I was a professional fighter. I was a professional kickboxer and uh, I was fighting for quite a long time. I started with 16 and I'm uh, now 38. So I stopped, I think when I was 32. So it was uh, yeah, quite a long career I had. And um, during my career, I was physically super strong, but mentally it was a struggle and emotionally. And so I went into the career, right? Studied physical therapy, then um, uh, psychology, and then mindfulness, contemplative practices. And I had my own gym, actually two gyms. Uh, now I don't have it anymore because I like to travel now around the world. And um, yeah, mostly my clients are uh, from MMA, boxing and kickboxing, but also judo, karate, all kinds of martial arts. And yeah, I work with guys all over the world and I'm teaching them how to feel better, perform better. Uh, I would say probably, you would say I'm a peak performance coach, however you want to call it, right? Yeah. I'm making their lives better, hopefully, <laughs> and uh, growing them, them as human beings, not just as fighters. Uh, yeah, that's that's my work, teaching them meditation. And obviously, I'm still a kickboxing coach, so I teach them still to punch people in the face. <laughs> <laughs> but always calm and controlled and collected, right? I always tell them, guys, if you punch someone's face, that's fine, but do it controlled, right? Do it with a mindful attitude, present. And presumably, <laughs> and, 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 and in a match, not like in Sainsbury's. <laughs> In the match, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm joking. I'm joking. I, I, I would be a terrible bar fighter or bare knuckle fighter. Every time when I see it, I'm like, oh my god, this is too hard. <laughs> this is crazy. So yeah, no, no, no. I'm very much into the sports, not so much in, into bare knuckle. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. Um, so I would. I'm. I'm interested initially. The sort of like first question, being, or just opening that door um, of what is it like when you are trying to like or i'm i'm probably fully aware from the type of personality of fighter and athlete and person that you're working with there will be a range of of buy-in at the start where someone's like yes i like the sound of this and you know for those that have never yet experienced any meditation mindfulness practice or just mm -hmm. a little bit of time from all the way to like, uh, I don't need this or, you know, someone that's, that's, and it's probably those people that need it the most. Right. <laughs> but how do you, how do you, how do you get that buy-in or what's the, what's the process that you um, go through with people to just, there'll be some, there'll be some people, cause what I'm thinking is there'll be some people listening to this that are like, Oh yeah, I've got a mindfulness practice already. And I use this app or I do this. I'm really interested to see like what I could learn about this. And there'll be other people that are about to go, oh, no, I won't listen to this one. Um, mindfulness isn't for me. Um, how do we how do we get those people on board? And what are the benefits? You know, look, when you when we talk about like us functioning as human beings in life, right? Everything starts in the mind or in the head, right? Every movement, every thought, every emotion, every motivation, everything we do, right? physically, mentally, everything starts in the mind. And when we are, let's say, not mindful, not present, right? When we are, because what, what means really mindfulness, right? Paying attention on purpose to the present moment, non-judgmentally. That's how we, because one of the, I think, best description for mindfulness, yeah. right? So being, paying attention to the present moment. If you're not paying attention to the present moment, which life unfolds in the now, in the present moment, you lose on, you, you miss out on life, right? That is something which I teach again and again and again. And I think my fighters or the military guys I work with, they can't even hear that anymore, right? But that's it, right? If you're not present, if you're not aware, you lose on life, right? When the mental noise, when we, let's say we, in our life, right? We're constantly mental time traveling in the past, in the future. We have our past programs with our future worries and we travel all the time in our mind, right? That means not being present, right? That's the mental noise, the distractions, the interferences mm. in our mind, taking us away from fulfilling our potential in the present moment. So now it doesn't matter if you're a professional athlete 
or you are, I don't know, in, in your business or you're talking to your loved ones, right? When you're not present, you miss opportunities and not just opportunities, also the quality of life. Mm. Yeah. And that, that is why I am such a strong, <laughs> yeah, I just, just like, I love that concept. I, and I'm obsessed about that bringing awareness, consciousness, and presence to people's lives, right? Obviously, all the other stuff I do also as a psychologist, but but that is the base. That's the foundation of our life, and that that is what we all have to understand, and always we need to come back because life is just, as you guys know, we all know, right? It's a constant destruction, right? So, so yeah, sorry. That was I think there's a really interesting sort of, uh, I don't know if paradox is the right word, probably not, I might be, I might be misquoting that, but this idea that like so i'm going to give you an example and it will be the same for a lot of people who are engaged in, in in fitness training competition sport whatever it might be so i love to snowboard and one of the reasons i love snowboarding is the mountains and the environment and i love everything about mm -hmm. it i love the equipment and the speed and the sound and the smells and like it's my like go-to place mm -hmm. The other thing I love about it is you can't focus on anything else while you're snowboarding yeah. hard. I have to be in the present moment. And it is so, so free. And because where we are in our day-to-day -day lives, so surrounded by constant distractions and noise and stress, all of that goes away on my snowboard yeah. for, those, for those minutes on the runs and, and whatever else. And it's the same when people are involved in any kind of flow state, right? That's where we're kind of yeah. trying to get yeah. to. Yeah. So the interesting bit, I think, is where I think people have got an edge over, over my mental preparation and ability is I struggle to find that in day-to-day -day life. Mm. I can't switch it off. Mm. But even when you know how freeing and liberating it is when you go and find something where you can feel that, mm. that's like the perfect holiday for me because I can lie on a beach and still worry about all the things I've got going on in my business, whereas if I'm doing something active, I can't. Yeah what's the the starting point and I, and I probably i know the answer because it's something that people have told me for, for time and time again that i just don't have the discipline to do but if you've got any tips for people like me i've got i've got a busy mind mm. and i struggle to quieten it down yeah, me too. where do i begin you know the, the thing is everything is a mental skill right everything we learn like focus concentration awareness presence right those are mental skills similar to physical skills i always tell the guys you want a bigger biceps you get a good trainer and you have a good program and you have a smart program, you eat right, you will get a good biceps, right? 21, no right? <laughs> <Yeah>. Magic. <laughs> right? And it's similar to the, to, the phys uh, to the mental skills, right? It's similar to the physical skills. You need to train it and you need to train every day. So the question is now, how much would you train, right? And nobody will sit down for, for an hour. But rarely, I have a client who says, oh, great, Daria, let's sit down for meditation or some breathing exercises for a half an hour or an hour. But you can do five minutes here, 10 minutes here, five minutes here, right? That's now on your motivation, right? How much you really want to change? How much do you really dedicate yourself? Because everybody can dedicate like five, 10, 15 minutes, right? And it all starts with super simple exercises, how to keep your attention on a object in a meditation, right? How you redirect your attention and keep your focus and concentration. Those are, let's say, meditation exercises, right? You can do, and I, I don't let anybody at the beginning when they start working with me, sitting more than 15 minutes, because it's just, it's almost unsustainable for us, which is scary, right? That it stresses us so much to sit 15 yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, take your phone. How many times do you scroll your Instagram? 15 minutes, gone like this, right? But then you can't sit down. And this is because the lack of belief, how much we can change, how much our, our brain and nervous system can change by little practice, right? That's neuroplasticity, right? The plasticity of our nervous system. And so the question is not so much what do you do, because you can do breathing, you can do mindfulness, you can do other meditation exercises, concentration exercises, simple things. It's not nothing complex. But the question is like, okay, how much really do you dedicate and believe in that, that you can change? And that's, that is the real root of, or, or, or the problem, let's say, in when it comes to mental performance work, right? The, the belief, like, so me as a coach, for example, I need to find your triggers. Like, what is it, right? What, what do you, where, where does it sit in you? So, yeah. Yeah. It comes down to a conversation on discipline, right? So it's it's like I can be super disciplined in my nutrition mm, yeah. and my training and consistent in those areas, but I, I lack discipline in the in the mental 
preparation uh, and it's it's necessary like I guess a conversation for a lot of people is different I've seen I've been in the strength and conditioning industry and seen the rise of combat sports come to the, to the forefront and obviously they've been around for centuries but the UFC did a massive job right in terms of popularizing and, and adding uh, a commercial element to to, to combat sports yeah. so within that I've always looked at people who, and, and, and strength and conditioning within combat sports grew really, really quickly. And I was like, well, that makes a lot of sense because if you're going to go into a cage or a ring, whatever it is, if someone's going to try and hit you in the face, then it's worth spending a little bit of money to make sure that you don't get hit that hard yeah. or that often, yeah. right? I love that Mike Tyson quote. Everyone's got a plan until they get punched yeah. in the face. <laughs> like, it's so true. The next one, when I go to conferences and I speak uh, along other psychologists, and I think Jacob and me, we talked about that when they're from from golf or from basketball, it's 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 a different area I'm in, and I'm always telling mm. them, I'm like, this is great. You can make them meditate and focus and concentrate a lot. Still a little bit different when the cage is closing, the situation, right? When you you and a different human being who's hundred percent ready and prepared closed in a cage and now you look into their eyes right there's so much different stress level and you i know, just cannot yeah. imagine like someone would think like playing a contact sport like rugby be like oh and then i'm sure there'd be plenty of rugby guys that would happily go in in the cage like i could literally i cannot oh. even imagine what it is like to go <laughs> properly Toe to toe with someone like that. I mean, I've been punched a few times on the rugby field, but like, that's just like a cheap shot. So, like, it's not just you versus someone else. Like, I can't even imagine what that, what is but going. Look how, look how it is, right? Talking about the warrior spirit, and uh, coming back to what what you guys also said about like that it's martial arts now is commercialized, right? But what is martial arts, right? It's an art, right? It's hmm. philosophy. Martial arts, all of the martial arts have a very similar philosophy at their root, at their base, right? They execute it in a different way. But at the roots, right? A warrior, what was the biggest strength of a warrior? Sure, skills. If you can't use your swords, you better don't go out there, right? I'm gonna be, that's it, right? But of course, your physical skills, right? Your technical skills. But then mental stability, right? Mental control, right? Awareness, presence controlling your inner states without that we lost in this world we completely mm. right we always look we we still and i think this is also part of my work is to, to teach people also that the our culture has a <laughs> wrong way right we want to control our whole external world towards feeling good internally right this is what we all do right we want to look good we want to do this all the stuff we get, the cars, the clothes, the, our careers, right? Even sometimes the partners we choose, right? Is because it has to do with controlling the external world. So I feel good, right? I feel safe because I have the money. I feel seen because I have the car, right? Let's, let's keep it simple, right? There are obviously levels to that, but to, to keep it simple now, right? So we, we are born here in this culture and we taught from the beginning you want to control your inner state, control your outer world. I think we all agree to this. It's impossible, right? And so it all comes down to control your inner state, right? To raise your energy. And we have those practices, Jekyll, breathing, right? Look mm. at this, how much you can raise your energy with breathing. Yeah. How much your awareness, your presence, right? You, you need to learn to regulate your nervous system. You need to learn to keep your prefrontal cortex, your forebrain, your rational brain active, right? Those are mental skills, and uh, lots of my teaching, actually, especially when I when I meet the fighters, right? They're all about the physical aspect. But then when I teach them, I'm like, look, you can't control the fight. You you can just control it to a certain level, but you can completely control your inner state, right? Mm. This is something that's on you, and the responsibility is on us now as a team, not just the yeah, fighter, right? Yeah. Also as a coach, and and that is something also what we all have to understand. That's warrior spirit, really, right? It's it's this yeah. inner control. The thing that I love about that, Daria, mm. is that it strikes me the irony is that you can't control the fight, but if you can control yourself, you can control the fight, right? Because if you are if you are present in yourself, I mean, I've, I've, I've observed and watched combat sports for, for a long time. When, when people lose their heads, like that's when they lose the fight, yeah. right? So it is all about poise and presence and control yeah. internally. To, to then not let whatever all the chaos is yeah. going on around yeah. you 
it's that quote who is that quote by about like can you keep your head when everyone else is losing theirs i forget who it is i want to say rudyard kipling but i don't know if it mm -hmm. is um but yeah, no, I think it's, it's it's a great a great analogy, and I think you know, like it's sometimes if if sometimes I think we need some, we need we need something to attach these kind of concepts to for, for someone like myself who's not particularly disciplined in this area. It's like, it, but I can relate to that warrior spirit. Mm. So can I embody that that mm. attitude and yeah. say well, I'm going to take a warrior spirit att attitude because I do that in everything else, in my business and, and family life, mm. and my relationship, with my wife, and everything. But can I do that for myself? internally it's a really interesting kind of just a concept which might give people and myself that hook to kind of go it's buying right at the end of the day yeah. that's what we're looking for and, and a commitment to practice i want to mm -hmm. pick up on uh, if you if tim you're happy to be the uh you know you you, you came forward as the exemplar um where well i haven't cried for for many years so okay, if darius do wants, if he wants a challenge yeah. let's uh <laughs> there's because there's like a couple of things that i think of and there'll be people that have there'll be a lot of people listening that are similar um, and there's a there's one thing from um, the Dalai Lama that says like every morning he like meditates for an hour and if he has a particularly busy day with a lot on he meditates for two hours and it's like I love that um, that analogy, I love that just concept or idea and the idea of that of going like what when you're busy you just sit there for two hours like how agitated we'd be when it's like I know I've got a lot on like to to yeah. do that would just be super challenging and. Um, the thing that I found, your answer to Tim's question, it reminded me of we get similar things. If we're teaching someone, we go to a workshop, we're talking about they want to do their frog to handstand or their muscle up. And, and Tim's great for doing this, where someone will be like, what's that thing that I need to do? What's the, what's the thing I need to do? And Tim will be like, you're just not strong enough. Like, you need to get stronger. There's like, there is no magic exercise that you need to necessarily do. And your answer yeah. reminded me of that. It was like, there's loads of different mind models. Like you need to decide whether you think you can do it or not. Like that's the sort of starting point. And um, you know, Tim, you sort of said, and people like, like we we do this with loads of stuff in our lives, don't we? Go like, I am X or I am Y. Like I have a yeah. racing mind, rather than like I don't know what the freight is like. I currently have a race in mind, but I'm going to change it. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it, it's, it's what we, what we say over ourselves can sometimes keep us in that place of like, um, like I've done it before with flexibility. Oh, I'm really unflexible because I played rugby yeah. and I'm like just putting myself in this like box of tightness that, that, uh, look, that isn't going to release. Yeah. And it's the best example of what you just said. It's beautiful because look at it. What, what do you do when you do that? Is that, the current you speaking or is it the past you speaking mm. it's a past you speaking yeah, right yeah. we are programs our brain now right now when we sit here our brain is a representation of our past experiences right in that moment so so you speaking here as you from yeah. the past and if you do not start changing little things exactly right now right now not tomorrow not in five minutes like now sit your ass down and start doing your exercises, right? That, that That is where you have to do it, right? Because otherwise, it will be always your past program self, your past conditioned, and as we know, our past program self, our subconscious mind is a little bit a terrorist, right? <laughs> <laughs> fucker, right? Constantly talking shit, right? That's just how it is. We have a negativity bias. Our brain is just built like that, like, and some less, some more, obviously, but it's like constantly nagging, constantly telling us you can't do this, you shouldn't do that, it's not worthy, like just stop to stop, stop tomorrow, yeah. and so on. That's the mental noise, right? That's what the understanding is like. Then sometimes, even when you when you get present for one minute, I tell my guys like even one minute a day, great, much better than nothing, right? And then you make it two minutes, three minutes, four minutes. And then after a while, you will sit in your 50 minutes meditation in the morning and you'll be like, oh, wow, actually, I, I feel content. I feel like in the now. And that's how change occurs, right? It's work, mm. right? It's our mind is a terrorist. You guys know, we know that, right? If I don't do my, ex I do that for, since 12 years. I'm, I'm doing meditation and all kinds of exercises, right? Sometimes people think actually I'm a little bit weird because I'm, doing like little shaking exercises, walking around, talking stuff on my balcony. <laughs> doesn't matter, right? I do my exercise. But if I stop doing that, and that's look how, how deeply conditioned we are and the culture is how it primes us to always, uh, let's say, towards a negative. I stop it for two, three weeks 
and my past programming immediately comes back. Yeah. It's a constant work. And even my mom sometimes, she tells me, like, she talks to me and she's like, when was the last time you did your meditation? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, okay, a little reactive here, a little. And, and immediately, like, then I start my exercises or my little meditations, and I do them four or five days, little things, all good. It's about a constant reminding you to be on track, right? Because you yeah. know how it is, like the brain is tricky, yeah. it wants to go off path, it wants to just be and not spend too much energy on working, right? Yeah. The brain is I lazy. Think, yeah, I think I think that the for a lot of people that will be listening to this that are into training, uh, like learning skills, like practicing things, like getting stronger, can appreciate that scenario of going like, well, it's like anything. You gotta do it. Like I can yeah. I, if I like the idea of doing pull-ups but never do any, I ain't gonna get any stronger at them. Um, yeah. I've and and seeing it as a seeing it as not this thing that I'm stuck in, seeing it as a skill, and the skill then requires me to actually like practice it, and it and that requires a little bit of time. Um, it's whether we. I still think I agree. This obviously, um, I, I, I think that you're right, but it's like the. The thing that then comes back down to in terms of am I actually going to do it or not mm. comes down to whether I think it's a worthwhile investment of my time. Do I mm. think other stuff is more valuable? Therefore, I'm not going to invest my one minute in my mindfulness or my three minutes. The challenge, I think, for all of us, for all of us is going, you waste easily that five minutes on your phone or on tv or on on something we all yeah. do um we waste it on something and so i think that's that's the sort of challenge that i am saying to myself people can join us in on that I, my other question um is like we're talking there about quite a bit of going like you know those that aren't yet engaged you must have guys um like for example i've done some um breathing sessions with like a, a whole rugby team and you've got the yeah. whole spectrum of different types of people different personalities yeah. and everything and you've got some people that like are really excited like yeah i want to do it because i've practiced some on me and do it and then you've got then you've got other guys that are just like yeah. not for me sunshine i'm already breathing here because coach said I had to yeah be exactly like coach said i had to be here i mean ideally um so i've got to go and see the physio see you later but you know what i mean it's like <laughs> there's people that are coming at it from a whole host of things it's very different working with a team in this mm. type of scenario than it is working with an individual. An individual comes to you go, I want to work with you. And it's like, okay, but the, obviously you've got mm. the binary. Like when you're working with, say like a, na you know, you're working with some national kickboxing teams and when you're working with a, with a group and you've got some of the, you've got a, a, a series of people that are, they don't want to do it. Like day one, they don't want to do it, but the coach is saying, well, you've got to do this session because we think it's important. Where does, how, what does that, what goes through that process? I think it's a very individual pr process. It depends on who you are as a coach also. And I think one of my strengths is that I am very authentic and I show a lot of my true self to the guys. And I speak a lot about the issues I have, right? I explain from the beginning what my journey is, what I have an issue is. And I think sometimes also this is bullshit. I don't want to do it when I have a very, very emotional day. If I sit down to the meditation, I feel like this is just fucking crap, right? Just want to go out and punch someone. And then sometimes I do. I spar with the boys. <laughs> just jump with your head and it's all good. But, but I think like it's the constant, open, authentic communication, right? And then, then as, as a group, you have to, to form the group also, right? To bring the group together. Because one thing is, if they train together and they do all the physical skills or they're on the field together and they, or they sit together and they probably should talk, they think they should talk about their inner, <laughs> inner fears, right? Or about the emotions. It's, it's a growth process, right? I, usually I'm getting them there. I usually start with like, like I talk a lot about my issues, right? My fears, very authentic. And I think what is also my strength is the feminine energy. I'm in a male dominated sport and, uh, I, just, I have just a lot of feminine energy and I love and I, I, yeah, I, my, sometimes I have some motherly energy probably. That's what they say at least. And, <laughs> and that, that energy goes through a little bit different also. It's, 
it's definitely uh, one of the strengths. And once you form the group and the trust and uh, yeah, then usually it's okay. They We sit down and I, I laugh a lot also, you know, the playful aspect actually, that's another really important aspect. I think when you, when you bring groups, especially male dominated uh, in sports, uh, male dominated sports, when you bring them, just, just keep it playful, right? And with everything we do in life, actually, we're so serious. I'm sometimes so serious. I'm like, what the heck? I'm teaching playfulness to people. And I get so, 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 so serious sometimes. And then, as you guys know, right, everything gets rigid and hard when you when you get serious. So, uh, yeah, that's another thing. We laugh a lot. We laugh about each other, <laughs> about ourselves. <laughs> and, yeah, after a while, it's usually okay. So I am wondering, Daria, if we've got this idea of, um, you mentioned it right back at the beginning of the conversation about this, this warrior spirit. So that could be stepping into the ring for a fight. Okay. For, for, for people that aren't in com- combat sports and listen to this, that could be stepping into an interview or going mm-hmm. in to ask for a pay rise or whatever other challenge, a, a difficult conversation with their families or spouse or whatever. Just, uh, I'm wondering if you've got any sort of helpful tips for people where they can, strategies that they can use to prepare themselves for big conversations like that. And I want you to, uh, my, my suspicion is that the more work that we've done before in terms of the things we've been talking about up until now prepares you much better yeah. for those moments. And, and my point of kind of raising that is like in life, like we know these storms are going to come, right? We are going to be faced with difficulties. So again, I'm just looking for hooks for, for myself. And this is, <laughs> these podcasts are often very like, it's like therapy for me and Jack. If you can make Tim cry, that'd I'm be great as well. <laughs> yeah, and no, my wife's right. She would probably really appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, something there. We'll talk. We'll pick up off line. <laughs> I don't want to do it now. Being recorded. Um. So, but I'm just thinking, like, if I know that I'm going to go into a storm, I know I'm going to have these difficult things, or I know there's going to be something in life that I want to go out there and get, and it's going to take a little bit of sort of like some bravery, courage to go and get mm-hmm. it. Like, what's that process like? Are there things people can do right in that moment? And then I guess also, how do we build up to that in terms of making ourselves prepared for such events? So there's basically three steps. So first is always, always, everything starts with awareness and present, acknowledging what is here, right? So usually you should do, you want to do that before you step into the interview or the ring, right? So you learn about like really acknowledging, investigating, your patterns of uh, reactivity. How do you react, right? You have to know because without paying attention really and knowing how you react in your thoughts, emotions, and body sensations to a stressful event, I'm not a witch. I mean, I I told Jekyll sometimes they say that, but (laughs) (laughs) those are not that evolved yet. So, right. So without having an awareness about your patterns, really hard to do something, but that's, Quite, pretty easy to get once you have a, a good coach who guides you through this. So first step, right? Acknowledging awareness. So second step. So this is this is self awareness, knowledge of self, basically. Know and that, yeah, know yourself. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And really, and then into the detail, right? Because so know that yourself means or know thyself means your thoughts, your emotions, your body sensations, right? Because a lot of people think about the thoughts, but it's also your emotions, your feelings your mm. patterns of reactivity right in your body your nervous system reaction one gets a tight throat right one gets sweaty hands when it's just shaking right oh everything comes at once that's usually the worst right we all know the <laughs> <worst>. <laughs> that's it. you're out of it and um, actually in school when i was in school as a kid i couldn't speak in front of of the other kids i lost my voice literally physically not like i i, I lost my voice i had to go to logotherapy for years Wow. Because I was so scared and speaking in front of people. And now I'm just training those monsters in MMA and telling them, now, here, this, that, that. <laughs> and I, right? So speaking about you can learn everything. So, yeah, but that, that's the first step. Then the second step is always about self-regulation, nervous system regulation, right? We have Jekyll here. Breathing, right? You can reg- you learn to regulate. Usually when you're in stress, right? And you're in sympathetic dominance, fight, flight, freeze. Right. Once you know your patterns already, if it's fight, flight, freeze, for example, right? What is your pattern? How you react? You can use breathing techniques: inhale, emphasize, exhale, emphasize, box breathing, breath holes. I mean, Jack was the expert on that, right? You can just work. You can work with conscious breathing. 
or awareness of breath. But let's say the topic of breathing is huge when it comes to nervous system regulation. Right? You can learn to regulate your emotions, which is a little bit longer process. You wouldn't do that on the go. But there are techniques to doing that. And then definitely one really, really, this like one of the most important tools I think to learn is the right way to visualize. Visualization is the most underrated skill of our brain. Like we just don't use it enough. It's so powerful. You can visualize, I mean, as many things, how you can use your brain, as many visualization types there are, really. You can, you can do skill visualization, right? Really just a skill, technique, tactic visualization, strategy, right? How to play. You can, you can learn to foresee failure, right? Very, very important to overcome a stressful situation. You need to visualize how you fail, how things don't go your way, and then how you maneuver out of it. Right? That's where visualization actually plays, plays a major role in sports or, or in, in situations where you perform on a peak and under pressure. Right? And that's sorry, but it's always like it's a long Yeah, no, keep going, keep going. Go. Right. So so this is the three steps I usually walk along also. Like so step one, awareness to know your patterns, know yourself. Step two, regulate your nervous system and with that, regulate your emotions. And then step two Use a real structured plan, uh, how to set your goals, what is the goal really, what is the outcome, very detailed, and then visualize, right? Use the right way of visualization to visualize your future self in all kinds. You're bulletproof. When, when, when I sent a fighter on a top level into the fight, we visualized everything. Everything what is possible, him knocking out, he, him getting knocked out, getting dropped, uh, standing knockout, uh, winning the whole fight like we we visualize everything right obviously very structured because <laughs> when you do everything at once you might be a little bit confused in the brain but right it's a it's a longer process but yeah that's it's a super valuable skill which pe people definitely underrate often there's an interesting thing within that i think in terms of um the, the visualization, I completely agree with you. I've, I've, I've heard that, obviously, in, in the sports performance world, um, through to business and sort of actually uh, helping yourself to visualize where you want to be. Where, mm. What do you do when you've got whatever it is that you're working towards? What does that feel like and sound mm. like and all that kind of stuff? I guess the interesting one is like when you were in, in the situation that, that you're talking about, where it is uh, making sure that we don't manifest or catastrophize what might happen. Mm -hmm. So that, that idea of like, we've had, I've had it before when I've been in stressful situations and my, and my mind goes to a place of like all the things that might happen that have not happened yet, <laughs> but I'm catastrophizing in my mind that might happen. And that actually then feeds that anxiety yeah, and course. stress. So what if I get hit in the face in the first 10 seconds and I get knocked yeah. out? Like, uh, but that the the skill of that I think is is that well I don't know you can tell us how do we how do we pull away from that negative downward spiral of catastrophizing to keep it in a in, in, and turn that into a positive uh, experience where we are visualizing a negative event but emerging from it positively does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So before like there there's a skill which is extremely crucial to it and that's attention and focus right you need to learn before it because our brain automatically will a lot of times go to the negative, right? We, we like catastrophe, right? Because when we were cavemen, you walked out there, there was something happening, you better thought like this, right? Be yeah. in fight, be ready, because otherwise you quickly killed, right? And no tribe needs a killed tribe member, right? So we, our brain learned to pay attention a lot to like staying alive. And so we have this, this so-called negativity bias, right? We first, In the first moment, something happens our first reaction is like oh what's up here right we're going into into fight right so catastrophizing is actually just part of it so you won't stop it but what you can do and that's a key component for men, for being like really mentally strong is redirecting attention and focus right and that's something you have to learn you have to sit down actually on your ass and learn it in meditation or with breathing exercises right where you really are object and there, there are many different uh, short, short meditations you can do to learn that right because let's say you have the skill kind kind of a little bit trained already where you learn to redirect your attention let's say you learned in your meditation to sit there and all kinds of negative thoughts are coming up but you learned to sit, be there in awareness to distance yourself and to observe right to to see what's going on and then 
to redirect your attention, let's say, on your breath to, or to redirect your attention on your body, right? That's, that's the skill. That's attention training, right? That's focus training. Mm. Redirect again. And when you sit and do your exercises sometimes, sometimes even I have to do it a hundred times in 15 minutes. I'm like, what the heck, right? It's like, and again, and again, and again. But that's the training. So, and there will be a moment, like in every training, where you can actually, oh, it was actually three minutes of, I could keep my concentration, I could keep my focus where I wanted it to have. So now when you go into a situation which is very scary for you, or very stressful, that skill is crucial, right? Let, because you can't stop it. Some, some things will trigger always. Some, some people will trigger something, some situations. Now, you learn to redirect your attention, right? It's like... Basically, your spotlight goes away from the shit into something a little bit more productive. Let's say breathing. Let's say you anchor yourself deeply in your body or you have a different person there around and you engage in a talk or some people listen to music, right? That, that is a superpower. Let's say you have, you have an interaction with someone or something happened to you in your life which is negative and really, really stressful, but you can't change it, right? You can't run away. You can't change it. What is the only thing you can do? Redirect your attention on something which is more valuable, let's say, more, more productive right now. Right? That is the superpower. Away from what stresses you towards something. Because if we don't train that skill, we constantly towards the, the one thing that really scares us, right? We get into tunnel vision, right? We get like our whole nervous system, right? We're in, in foveal vision, right? In central vision, that's why we look like this, right? We're in sympathetic nervous system, all crazy, right? That That's how the brain and nervous system is, is taught by nature to do that. So we need to, to learn to redirect that attention. And that again, that's a superpower. Nice, yeah. I've got one other question, Jackie. I, I feel like I'm asking a lot no, of questions no. today. Do you want to ask a question? No, no, no. You go for it. Um, just one other thing. I guess this is kind of part B of that previous question. Say you've had a fighter who's gone and had a catastrophe, mm. got knocked out big time, mm. like gone, gone, just got everything went badly. What's that process like of rebuilding or reflecting around to get back into a place where you then come back with a real sense of belief that you can go and do that again mm. and going to get a different outcome? So the first, and that's, I think a lot of coaches know that, but so the first is the super crucial, is the first moment. When that fighter is getting out of the ring, out of the cage, into the locker room, when his world is crushed, nothing, zero negative. Like whatever you have to do as a coach, if you have to dance, which that's actually funny because I dance a lot in the locker room and there are a lot of videos on YouTube <laughs> on like us dancing with the fighter because he was just, it was before the fight actually, right? But what, whatever you have to do as a coach to, to bring him into a calmer nervous system, right? In, because you want, you want immediately to break the pattern, right? So you want to calm the nervous system. You want to, to, because, so after you get knocked out, right? Your subconscious mind, you, you're not completely conscious usually, right? So it's your subconscious mind taking in everything. So whatever you want to, you have to do, give the subconscious mind whatever you make up positive, right? It's all about that, to stabilizing them after that loss. And sometimes the problem is with coaches and fighters because when, when my fighter gets knocked out, I take it on me, obviously, right? And if your ego as a coach, if you don't keep your ego in charge, you might, when you have a weak ego, blame the fighter. If you want to kill someone's psyche, the mental part, just do that. Mm. Put your ego issues on, on them and tell them mm. all you've done this and this and this wrong. And that's the same with kids, right? When we work with kids, you have to be like, oh, you have to be so, so neutral. If you can't be extremely positive, just be neutral. But for God's sake, don't put your shit on other people, right? So, so that is the first process. And I, I coach a lot of coaches and I, I teach them that you need to keep your ego in check. And then further the process, then it's like usually like a week or even two weeks later, we, we just uh, reflect, right? But everything is neutral. We don't even go really deeply into the details. Fighters want to talk, right? They want to find reasons why, why, why that happened and everything. But just, just it's, 
basically it's nervous system first nervous system work like balancing the nervous system because there's as Jacko knows nervous system reactions a lot of subconscious mind stuff coming up right when we so you want to bring them in as much as you can in parasympathetic nervous system activation right into relaxation into calm right and then one thing what, what maybe a, a few coaches wouldn't agree with fucking unconditional love i give them so much love even when they did a mistake right after the fight i give them so much unconditional love because i treat them like my kids right and yeah if you maybe he didn't listen yeah still like it's still a fight right <laughs> he didn't do it on purpose he wanted to win right because love will heal everything and unconditional love doesn't mean that i will tell him he's great or he did everything great no but to to let that person that kid especially when they're younger know that everything is all right you're all right and then after in step three we can start working right we can be like okay let's video video analyze like for example i don't want them to watch the fight a week after after the fight right i just the later two three weeks later let's analyze let's let's now with a calm nervous system with a heart full of love right which we all struggle with let's sit down and analyze and then it's just about the facts right i always tell them like put the emotions to the side just let's see what was what was wrong what was good right what, what can we can we improve yeah it's interesting amazing it's interesting because like <laughs> when you play a sport where it's weekly we would we would play saturday potentially drown your sorrow saturday night sunday recovery session monday come in and if you've played badly get hosed whilst watching the video analysis by the coach <laughs> that was shit that was crap da, 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 da. and you're like you haven't had the and, and there's all that emotion still in it because exactly. you haven't got the luxury of going right like actually down regulate actually get to a point where your nervous system is calm enough so that your emotions can be calm enough that then you can analyze it without all of that like emotional baggage surrounding yeah. the event when you're you know when you have to do that analysis two days later that's that in my experience was definitely like a a big big challenge but um but that's the thing jacko also that's why we have to educate the coaches that's why i'm so dedicated to educate coaches because a lot of coaches don't know that mm. they don't think right it's the only way they know just i was taught like this after the fight in the locker room i lost the fight my my coach told me already 20 things why i'm shit <laughs> right? yeah. and then Cheers. maybe i lost another one right and then that's the downward spiral. That's when you lose people, right? And it's not just like you lose a fighter or a talent. Yeah, but nobody cares about that really. Yeah. You lose a person, right? Yeah, I think you... the same. The same though. There's the sim same trap, but a different scenario of like when we win, and it's just like woo, woo, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's like there's zero actual sort of like um, analysis potentially. Uh, of, of in that calm state we're just in a we, we feel we feel good so that's great but it doesn't actually help us from not losing the following week or in the yeah. following event because we haven't analyzed um with a calm mind without the emotion mm -hmm. but it's just all the positive emotion then it's we're watching it through rose tins again which doesn't seem well, as bad can... but you're still not moving forwards that's where you find those athletes that are super effective though isn't it those that can give them the they can celebrate their success that they know to bookend a block of work if it's gone well to go i did i smashed it and i'm going to enjoy it i'm going to revel it i'm going to feel it but then the next week to come back and go what didn't i do what can i do better yeah and rather than just go, oh, I won one, so I'm going to win the next one or, or whatever it might be. I've seen that so many times. And, and those athletes as a coach that come to you and go, what else can I do? You're like, yes, let's go. Like there's always more that we can yeah. do. We can always improve something. So no. that, I think that mindset of getting into, into the world and our lives is important as well. Like, okay, I had a success, but Jack and I have talked about this before in, in, from a business perspective of we, we can be so quick to move on to the next thing. Even though we've yeah. achieved something really successful, we never really kind of like celebrate yeah. it or give ourselves – the praise for it we're always like next 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 yeah but that's not healthy right we've got to we've got to recognize those victories that we get and then also understand that it is a progression to, to the, what can we improve the key actually right and that's again warrior spirit is the neutral mindset we do not cultivate in our lives enough and pay attention enough to a neutral mindset yeah because 
we that's a very very known buddhist concept right we attach immediately we cling to everything we hold on to everything that is pleasurable right what is amazing we have aversion we want to push away as much as we can everything we don't like or we react with indifference right when when we don't like someone when something's like those are things like attachment aversion and indifference right those are the three things so we're always like pushing pulling like but the neutral mindset right the neutral when when because neutral mindset what does it mean also it's also neutral nervous system right sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system is flexible right you need the sympathetic you go <laughs> off right <laughs> you want to go off activate okay you need you want to rest you rest right so everything in balance that's the neutral mindset right with a nervous system that is flexible and elastic with a cognitive system that's fle flexible and elastic can go from narrow to wide right mm. that's when we are the best that's when we analyze the best that's that's when we are the most present right when we in this neutral true mindset and i think this is something also about our culture we don't want we don't like to be neutral because it's like huh yeah. right huh. it's just like uh, how are you uh, nothing i'm just am i'm just being right? and people ask you oh so it's not good no, like no no i'm actually i'm okay i'm <laughs> right this is something to cultivate and i not just in athletes right and in all of us it's that's also we don't pay enough attention to that yeah yeah that's just absolute gold in there yeah. Daddy. i love that thank you so cool i um it was we almost one we, we had a couple of other like questions um but almost wanted to when you fit when you when you hit that um uh we said like about give them unconditional love because actually like them as a person as opposed to like what happened in the fight is 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 what is is what important it was almost like that was going to be a lovely place to finish up but if if people um I've marked that clip jacket yeah, 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 i was like that's, it. There was, <laughs> that's going to be the there was another piece. there was another clip that was what did you said um don't put your shit on other people i was like that's a clip right for you there that's the i like that um <laughs> but yeah so um you know huge uh, admiration for the work that you do Daria. um if people you've got your mindful athlete program um if people are like okay this is something i want to um, it's a potential doorway to to open up more ability for myself. Yeah. Like, just tell us a little bit about that uh, and where people can find you on sort of social media and your website. Yeah, it's it's actually it's just one Daria Albers on Facebook and on Instagram. I don't know <laughs> the name combination is fun. Same I guess it's like just one Daria Albers and uh, it's dariaalbers dot com. And yeah, that, everything is written about the map. My philosophy program is actually a program where I put all those tools together, all those things we talked about, that steps to go really through awareness, present, self-regulation, and then visualization process. Everything is put in one program, which people can uh, do self-contained, but also I teach it one-to-one -to, -one to people. Depends who needs and wants uh, something. And yeah, that's the program to go to. Awesome, yeah. awesome. <laughs> Love it. Thanks so much for coming and sharing some experience and there's some great wisdom in there. I loved yeah. it. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate that. There we have it, Timbo. Um, Derry Albers, an absolute... I've got some... I need to digest that a little bit. I've got some things to... I've got some things to think about. I'm looking forward to when you... Uh, have a have a call with her and i want to hear i want to i want the i want the uh i want the behind the scenes how did it go did you cry or not uh sort of feedback so uh, that's what that's what the what listeners like, want to like, know is like you have that call and let's uh let's let's <laughs> let's have a debrief afterwards i honestly don't know if anybody can do that you know i think i'm a pretty i <laughs> i'm really gonna put this out there that favorite. she's that she's worked with harder nosed guys than me and you. Oh yeah. Well, I don't know, but physically maybe, but emotionally, I'm right <laughs> attack me. Like, I'm like, it's, it's that internal tension okay. that you want to worry about. I might not be able to round out anybody in the head, but you know, there's some there's some stuff which is buried down pretty deep under go a lot and, of yeah. rocks down there. Go and have that. Go and have that. That that, we'll that, see. that session. Uh, the thing, you know, one thing, my one reflection takeaway from this was, you know, like we did this podcast recently about what do we do mm -hmm. with the information that we that we gain from speaking to guests. This one is like a real simple one. Like just, just I, I, 
for me personally, my reflection is just got to get on and do it and be a bit more disciplined yeah. with it. Like, and it's it's low hanging fruit. It's five minutes. Yeah. It's really low hanging. Well, my fruit. thing. So start with that. Implement yeah. something. But I think that the thing that made a big difference to me in hearing her say it was the case of going like, it's something you need to practice. It's a skill. Do you actually want to put the time into it? Are you going to actually mm. do that or not? And it and it comes down and it comes down to that. Um, I've I've found that like trying to improve my breathing has been a very good mindfulness practice where I can sit and be still and focus on that but I'm try I'm doing it in order to improve my breathing rather than as a focus or attention piece and that's then like taking it or having a new slant in it for me is something I'm going to uh, going to experiment with and looking forward to seeing uh, how that how the body or the how the mind responds like it right guys Anything else to tell him, Jacko? Oh, Should we, we can, sign off? We can do some reviews and all those types of things, the type of thing that people do. Oh, yeah, you want to yeah. Well, I don't know, Jack. I'll give me a week off from that. I think the most important thing, you, the, 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 okay, have a week off from giving us a five-star review. I know you something you do on the on a regular basis, but don't do anything apart from this week by going and yeah, something from Darius' good conversation. Call. Good, good call to action. Sign off from good that. call to action. Next week, we'll get yeah, back on the five-star Put your phone reviews. down, turn it awesome. off, and just try and be still for a little bit. Um, right, until then, we see you next week. Uh, keep exploring your physical potential with movement, strength, and play. Class dismissed.